Hey y'all, thanks for joining me this time. Um, in this round, we're gonna do a little bit more work on the frame sections that I need to get uh, painted here in the next month or two before it's too cold outside to really do it. Um, got a bunch of uh, minor damage cleaned up. Some of it you saw in an earlier episode. Uh, stripped a few more things off. Uh, did some priming on a cross member that I had blasted. few other little things and uh with some bonus footage thrown in of a truck show that i went to um well it's tractors tractor pull uh stationary engines stuff like that but the aths uh, local heartland chapter had six trucks there and a couple of them cab over style stuff but some little footage of that thrown in there just for good measure so Here we are again working on this sexy beast. What I'm gonna do is sand down my first ugly coat of Mondo here. I put it on real thick so it would uh, basically fill as much as possible. I don't wanna have to come out here 38 times to do this. After my power washing, basically it knocked all the dirt off. So you can see kind of the true condition of this paint. You see rub spots where it's down to metal. See like here. This is what happens if you uh, don't do any prep work. That's a factory paint under here. Up here has had multiple coats of black. Like here you can tell. Um, it's hard to see, but this darker stuff is the newest coat. Then this lighter stuff is underneath. Then you see the factory paint. I'm kind of torn between going with that color paint when I do the final, the final paint on this thing or just sticking with black. For now, I'm going to do black. I've um, already talked about kind of my ultimate long-term objectives with this truck. And that's going to be to get everything mechanically sorted, everything tidied up, all the lines kind of run where everything looks good. And then if I want to go ahead and really pretty the thing up and make it original, I won't have to be doing all the mechanical stuff at that time. Like, I won't have to be doing all the lines. Basically, it's just one thing, strip the stuff off, paint it, put it back together. It's like, that doesn't involve a ton of money. So if I can kind of spread out the money, you know, as we're doing here, get the thing running and driving, then I can worry about the fine, final details, you know, really making it perfect. For now, I just want to get it one color, looking pretty. Like I said, I'm gonna go from about here, including this cross member here, from probably here, basically up here to where I can't get past the back of the rear engine mount in there inside outside of the frame and probably the transmission if I go ahead and paint that maybe not the same time I do the frame but I will do that before I put all the lines and everything on so I'll set you up I'm gonna be using my little DA sander there and uh, just gonna zip it down real quick primarily right now I want to just slick this down so I can put another coat on it but I'll also hit this a little bit just to do it I don't want to take the thing down to the metal because then it could rust but a lot of this there's factory paint under so i can sand it pretty good and not even have to worry about hitting any metal some here i ground out some rust so and it hasn't flash rusted much but i'm gonna set you up and we'll get busy
Now I'll tell you, this is where my OCD gets me in trouble. You probably watch a lot of guys restore semi trucks on the YouTube channels, but I bet you never watch one put Bondo on frame pits. That's my problem. I can't shut it off. Basically what I'm doing, I'm just gonna sand as soon as I start to get burn throughs and I can it becomes a little transparent, that's when you stop and that's when you add more. Otherwise you're just sanding it all right back off. And that's just the first coat. See how it's just starting to burn through a little? That's where you stop. So I'll show you what it looks like after you sand the first pass. It's pretty smooth. I mean, it's super smooth to your hand, but you see all these low spots that are still there, like here, and you see pinholes. These are my bolt holes, but what you do is you sand around them just enough where you can just get a file in there and just doop, 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 and all that'll come right out. No big deal. Whack it with a socket and then file it. See all these big white spots here? These are the low spots, the, the pits basically that I'm filling here. All these little low spots, you know, these little white chunks, that's all huge rust pits that I'm fixing. That's my objective here is to get rid of all that. That, if you paint that, super noticeable. Um, basically outside of where the brackets and stuff was mounted, like all that, is fine. I'm gonna get my sander here and I'll run it down along here and you can kind of see what goes on while I'm just knocking off this loose paint. super labor intensive you can see it just basically feathers everything out it makes it look like you know it's not you're not seeing jagged edges from like transition of paint to bare metal to whatever you see a little bit there and i'm just using a that's a wore out i think 180 grit disc but you can see right here how it perfectly blended it 
how right here it's all kind of still flaky and stuff. Basically, you can't paint that. If you paint that, the paint will soften all this up and flake right off. And you also cannot just paint right over something like this. It's not going to have any chemical or mechanical adhesion. So you have to have ideally both of those things to get a good, you know, a good bite. If you just paint right over something without even touching it with anything, your paint's not going to adhere well, which, which is what's going on here. They didn't sand this or anything, so the paint just comes off with your finger. Okay. We're on the other side of the truck. Put me another pad on there. I got a lot less Bondo on this side. It was in better shape. Not nearly as much damage. But we're going to have a commercial break real quick. If you go get you a vintage truck magazine, September, October issue with the Scout on the front, I'll show you something cool. Look at that. You dudes recognize it? It's that one. That's pretty cool. Wrote a story about the old girl and got her published. She's a celebrity now. Like I said, September, October vintage truck. Okay, back to work. I'm only recording about 5% of this. done any sanding at all here on the inside I got me a fresh coat on the top of that There's just two done quite a bit of sanding on this one I'll do that next I'm gonna pull a couple of those fasteners out but it's cleaning up pretty good pretty quick look at all these huge factory runs these are factory paint just huge runs took forever to sand them out um, also, I uncovered more pits that I gotta fill. You see them all pretty plainly. And if you can see them this plain, you know, when they're all ugly and rusty, you can imagine how much they'll stick out um, after they get some shiny paint on them. So they're very small, but I'm gonna go ahead and just fill them. That's a factory weld right here. See the other ones over there? It goes right down the hole it being. So I'm not worried about that, but this definitely and apply just a little bit more there. Pretty much is about all it's going to need on this frame rail. The inside don't have any. Well, I got a big batch of uh, parts to epoxy prime this morning. A couple of fenders for a Chevy pickup, tailgate for a Dodge. More importantly, I've got uh, my cross member that used to go between the fuel tanks. On the big truck these are the uh, brackets that go 
here, mount to the frame. And surprisingly to me, even as thick as these are, quarter inch thick, every single one of these is split on the top. And a big old crack. That's a quarter inch thick steel. It's impressive that there'd be enough force exerted on that thing. See, this one's cracked. Anyways, all of them are split, but this is uh, some pretty thick metal that took quite a bit of uh, blasting to get cleaned up. So, see a little bit of stone chips and stuff. So I gotta get these epoxy primed quick. Like, I'm probably just gonna go ahead and prime them as well, even though they're split. That way I can handle them and not have oily fingerprints all of them. So I'll, I'll epoxy prime them. Then I'll go ahead and fix the splits in them. That one's probably the worst. They haven't actually separated. There's fatigue cracks. That one's a little bitty. Right there. So. This is why you uh, pull everything off and sandblast them and, you know, get down to a base metal, find out what you're working with. So I'll go show you outside what we're also going to epoxy prime there. Here we are in the paint booth again. Um, got a big batch of uh, stuff to epoxy primer. Uh, those guys are for the semi uh, 54 Chevy truck parts. Um, let's see. These little fellas, these are the uh, air tank straps. I hit my face on it. Um, there's four of them. They mount inboard of the frame rails. I had to uh, beat the truth out of this one. It had been warped a little bit from truck it was on rolled so uh acoustics in here are terrible learned that from the last truck video i already knew that but brain fart anyways um i'm gonna hook the gun up and you can watch me shoot one of them you're gonna see real quick why it's real hard to shoot something that's hanging from the ceiling this is just epoxy primer um but if you pull the trigger on it it's blasting it with the uh, air pressure and it'll start swinging all over the place so this could be exciting. Hang on a second.
Good job. So I come up here, get it all mashed off, and we have 9,000 mile an hour sustained gale force winds. So this is gonna be fun. I uh, probably only got enough in here to do one frame reel. So I'll shoot this real quick, then mix more, and then put you in my hand probably when we do the other side. Um, I gotta shoot the bottom first, because that's, how you, that's where you run out of paint first. Then do the tops and then the sides, because that's, you know, the most conducive to getting paint into the gun. So. Let's roll. Two no, I'll do it in one shot. Trying to get the bottom to all the bolts. Pretty good. We're going to the other side. This side is the shady side, but I'll let you go along with. I'm real close to running out of primer. Catching on stuff on the ground. Inside the frame rail. Not the inside of the frame rail, the inside of that lid. Sorry, trying to get my air hose off my material. Try to get the uh, inside and bottom side of all the holes real quick.
Well, that turned out pretty good. Can't really see it well on this side, but got rid of most of the pits. This side wasn't that bad to begin with, so we'll go look at the other side. Like I said, didn't do the inside yet, but I'm not doing no body work on that, so that doesn't really matter. I'm thinking I'm probably going to just end up uh, sandblasting this back half. I'm not going to do it myself, but um, I'm going to take this off and replace it. So I already have to do that. I'll probably pop that fifth wheel plate off, make sure there's no rust underneath of it. Go ahead and take care of all of it at the same time. Have that off when it's blasted. Probably have that off, but that's going to be later. Not right now. It's this side. It's a lot cleaner. Now I can go ahead and uh, drill the holes that I need for the uh, air tanks. I can um, re-drill the holes for that cross member. I'm either gonna move it forwards or back, I'm not sure where. I'd like to move it forward a little. So I gotta re-drill at least half of those holes. Um, got everything in there. Can't see it real good. One of the fuel tank hanger brackets goes here. The other one goes here but what you can also do when you get this primed is you can see imperfections that are still there that aren't like like a nick stuff like that that aren't you know part of the factory process of doing this metal like right there you see some paint that wasn't sanded perfect all this is like flawless so any ir irregularities that are there i can go ahead and just sand like right there the paint chip just little stuff like that I can easily identify and fix at this stage. But right now, the main purpose of that, like I said, was just to get the bodywork, everything sealed up, um, make it where I could work on it without having to worry about rusty fingerprints or surface rust or anything like that. So the next step will be after I get all my holes drilled, I'll shoot any area that has bare metal, I'll shoot with a little more epoxy. And then right over top of this will be a high build primer. Scuff that down and then shoot it with the black. This side is pretty much done. I would say as far as work that needs to be done to it, other than just priming and paint, it's like 95%. That all there, uh, there's very little of it that is down to like the metal. So there's not really much of a rust issue. So it's more or less just a little light surface scale in a couple of spots and just I'll probably run the air sander what I can get to, shoot the epoxy on one side or both at the same time. I also have to do a real good degreasing on the bottom side mainly of the transmission, cleaning the surface rust off. And after a survey on the uh, 4070, the international cab over page, most of these units from what I've read were gloss black. So that's gonna be kind of a, a gloss back black transmission later the engine will get painted red so for now i'm going to go right to the back of the engine paint everything from here back so the frame rails will be black a uh, semi-gloss like lower gloss black that'll be a uh, gloss black so it's gonna look pretty sharp i'll probably pull the drive shaft out take it to my shop that i use and make sure that it uh is balanced right the rear differential the pumpkin that, well, it'd be the front differential. That one was overhauled recently, so it's got kind of a cheaper coat of paint on it. That cross member still has to come out and get blasted, but we're making good progress finally. So making making headway on for sure getting the tanks back on. That's my big next obstacle, get the fuel tanks mounted. That way I can run all the lines, replace all that junk down there and make some noise, make some smoke come out of that pipe. So I'm not taking nothing else off this truck until we do that. Everything else back there we'll be worried about later other than lines, the interior of the truck. I'm gonna get a seat, probably get a seat recovered, you know, factory style and get that put in there so I can drive it, put the shifter back in. Like you saw last week, that's all put together. Just needs to go back in there. But it's all turning out good so far. Look at this beauty. Um, You'll have to uh, forgive me. The uh, owners of most of these trucks were in a meeting when I uh, was doing this and I neglected to write down any of the information as far as powertrains and years on some of these machines. Um, this one I believe to be a 
uh, Peterbilt 359. Absolutely gorgeous machine. I love red too. She is absolutely beautiful. Very few trucks actually get built to this quality, especially around here, but it's amazing. This one here is a uh, W900, uh, much like the one that uh, Twin Sticks is building. Not 100% sure on the year of this one either, but again, beautiful truck. I like the yellow. A lot of yellow doesn't work on a lot of things, but I think it looks pretty good on this one. Stacks look good. This one has an oddball power plant. I forget which model it was, but it's cat powered. Pretty high horsepower unit. Then we've got one of my favorite older trucks. A uh, well, a lot of old trucks are my favorite, but this one is cool. It's a needle nose Kenworth 1948 model. She's a pretty good runner and driver, obviously. Needs a little work around the edges, but don't they all? It's just really cool to see a truck this old still out there running around. And a twin stick machine. These old Kenworths are pretty cool. With these, they have a kind of a distinctive curved metal roof on them. The one I'm going to show you in a, in a short period of time does as well. But twin sticks would love this one. I do. Then over here we have a, uh, a gorgeous uh, 379, I believe it is. Big sleeper. Another flawless machine. I love the red and black two-tone. Red and black goes well together on pretty much anything. Big old sleeper on it. Stacks. And I'm not a huge fan of the green steering wheel, but that's literally the only thing that I would change on this truck, probably. She's a good-looking machine chrome caps on the uh, frame bolts like the other two on the other end of the line now we're talking some classics here the guy that owns this is probably in his 80s this is a bullnose kenworth a 1953 model he told me that uh i like it dude uh is in decent shape i mean it's got new tires nice sets of wheels runs and drives good that's the model year designation. He hauls this big uh, tanker on there. Just put some water in it. Keep some weight on the back of it. She's a bit of a rough rider. It's got a big Cummins in it. I think he said it was a big cam 400. But like I said, don't quote me on that. These are some really cool trucks. I'm going to do a short uh, feature on one of these trucks here in about... Uh, a week or two probably depending on how my video output and all that goes this truck has just a uh, non-powered rear axle tag axle whatever you wanted to call them he did have the uh, interior partially restored on this truck I like the dash I love the big old steering wheel black vinyl I didn't open up the sleeper I didn't want to get in there and pry it's got a 13 speed in it Look at the door panels. I love the big KW badge in it. This is a pretty sharp truck and a really nice guy that owns it. He's not in California. He's in Oklahoma, obviously. Look at that body line. So unique. Almost like a locomotive. And then we have this beauty. This is probably my favorite one there. This is a uh, K100. This guy drove about two hours to get here. K100 and the International Transtar are my favorite of the cab overs. Followed closely by like an early 3, 352. But this thing is just beautiful. Dual stacks. Big old headache rack. It's a big cab. You know, the long sleeper. Polished wheels. I mean, she's just out of this world. And the guy works her on the, the hay fields and hauling stuff here or there. They've got newer trucks, so it doesn't need to use that much. But wow, is this thing pretty. I just love that body line at the bottom of the cab with a little swoop down to the front. I forget which engine it has in it. He told me, but I forgot and I didn't write it down. So let's get a look in here. I'm gonna have to put the camera down here in a second. 
I really love the vintage 70s, 80s look here. This thing is just minty. Look at the sleeper in this thing. It's huge. The one in my cab over probably is like here. Things like three feet longer. Just something else. This must have been a Cadillac of sleepers back in the day. Other than maybe the Aerodyne. I don't know, I'd probably prefer this. Can't stand up or nothing, but this thing is just a beauty. I love the interior. Very 1970-ish. One thing about these K100s, look how far over the clutch pedal is. I mean, it's like an inch from there. And these two pedals are way over here. You're not heel toe in this one. This has a, what do you say, 15 speed? Cool fans. This thing is so neat. Nice little guy owns his truck. I'm pretty steady, I'm not terrible. Okay. 